Hey, hi, hello. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jess, creator of Owens Town, and we're here for some quick mess. I am a bit sweaty. I don't know if you could tell, but I was just re-watching the Usher Tiny Desk after watching the Juvenile Tiny Desk. So needless to say, I was bumping and grinding and grooving in my living room. So excuse me if I'm a look, look a little dewy, okay? Anyway, on to important matters. So I'm like, meow, meow, meow. I don't keep up with things. I'm barely on Twitter because it's literally a fucking disaster. I don't want to sign up for threads or the other 17 different uh, companies that are trying to be Twitter. So I don't see many things, right? But I was like, oh, boo, 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 boo. And then this mountain, I saw something. I was like, hold up. I don't know how this started. And I really didn't take much time to go look back at the origin like I used to do because I just do not have time for that. But I was like, hold up, because this is something I'm ready to get on the crusade for. Sorry, let me find the first tweet that I had seen. Okay, shout out to Mary if you're watching this. Hey, again, I did not look for the origin of this. So if you know it, great. You can share it down below. Also, if you're like, Jessica, why do your shelves still look like that? Hmm, I have an answer for you. Mind your business. Don't check me, check your TBR. Because have you read any of those books? Neither have I. But that's not the point. Don't come for me, boo. Don't do it. Anywho, the first tweet I saw was from Mary. I'm a little sad seeing a bunch of authors pushing back so hard at request from librarians and teachers asking for shorter books on behalf of the actual teens they work with on a daily basis. Writer, this is not an attack on your work. Please don't take this personally and listen. No one is saying you can't write long books. There are a lot of very successful books that are lengthy, both in word count and number of books in a series. But kids are really struggling right now. Heck, adults are struggling. And heavy on the adults are struggling. It's me. We need a variety of book links for all readers. Yes, there are readers who will read a thousand page epics, but we also need 100 to 300 page novels to help those who can't do that. Please. It's like not every story needs 20 plus book series. Standalones are great too. Shorter stories can be just as wonderful. Look at just how many incredible anthologies we have now. Authors, again, please don't take this personally. This is not an attack on you or your art. If you are a writer who writes prolifically, who has really expansive stories in the world, that's great. No one is making you write short, but we have got to make room for shorter books for those who need them. And kids and teens need them right now. They have so much going on in their lives. Please listen to those advocating for their students and the kids in their lives. This is a very real request that has been made for years and publishing has refused to pay attention. Okay, for a moment, I have to catch my breath. All that throwing it back for those tiny desks really, really got me out of breath. Oh my God. Okay. Anywho, heavy on the we need them for all readers. Because as y'all know, um, those who have been here for a long time, my reading has gone down um, over the last year as I've returned to full-time work. I, I mean, I don't even know if my reading can, comp it's not even half, it's like a quarter. A quarter maybe like I don't know how many things I've read this month this year uh, but it is definitely not comparable to the last three years actually yeah the last kind of even before that of reading but specifically last three years that I've been on booktube it does not compare and recently I've been wanting to read but so many of the books that I have are very long I read a lot of fantasy so those tend to be longer uh, and even some romance books are starting to get we're passing the 400 page mark? No. And so I was like, hold up, finally, the universe is is here for me because I need this all the time. I have been mainly been trying to read books under 400 pages. And unfortunately, a lot of the books that I want to read are over that. So I was really excited to see this here message. Additionally, I then saw the worst tweet. Okay, we won't get there. Hold on. I, I, let me, let me go. Let me, let me, let me, let me. Let me backpedal. Is that how you call it? Backpedal, backtrack to another two. Yeah, you yes, although it's very hot in here. It needs a ceiling fan in here. <sighs> no, it's fine. I'm just, this video shouldn't be too long. It's hot and I was just, you know, popping it in there. Yeah, let me take off your shoe. Let the coldness from the ground hit you. Oh no, I just lost like a quarter inch in height. Aww. You can take that little demon. I think he's calmed down, but he was losing it a few minutes ago. Okay, 
So another tweet shared by Mary said there have always been readers for short books, long books and both. And there always will be. What there hasn't always been and what's most threatened now is equal access to all books. I hope everyone can focus energy on the true red alert danger in our industry and country, which is true. Very true. Very important. Also, side note, not book related at all. What's wrong with these men? <laughs> I a question I continually ask my friends is why are men? Question mark. Nothing further. Why? After this mess with Kiki Palmer's nanny, baby daddy, whatever he is, spout nonsense on her Wi Fi. Mm. And Jonah Hill, please. <laughs> why do they exist? I don't know. Anyway, back to, <laughs> to the topic. So this says, you know what I don't get? Kids want shorter books. Librarians are begging for shorter books. Parents are desperately looking for shorter books. Writers want to write shorter books. Paper is apparently very expensive and yet for some reason books continue to be very long. I think it's pretty dismissive to listen to the complaints from librarians and teachers and then to say, oh, but the spines have to be thick. Bookshelves have always existed, but kid lit is more verbose now than it ever has been before. It's putting young readers off. And again, I want to pause here because the majority of my audience is very understanding um, that things like Twitter and even here in a video, I can't explore every crevice of nuance around every topic. But if you are new here, let me just let me just say this, that I know that there are more things than just, hey, writers write short books. I know that. Publishing, if you are new to my channel, you can check out this playlist of the community and go back and see how many videos I have on the fuckery that is publishing. So I know, I know that a lot of this is publishing and whatever, and I don't know what goes on there because I don't work in publishing. If you do, that's great. Give us some insight in the comments. But just know that I wanted to talk about this because this is something I feel deep in my loins and I wanted to talk about it, okay? shorter books because I have also and it's not like I'm the only one there's other people who have spoken about this or just talk about their feelings on very long books but I feel like I've seen a trend in the last several years especially in fantasy and really in young adult too how longer these books are getting I'm like okay one I want to think of is um uh which is steeped in gold that was a young adult book I dnf'd it very early on for reasons but it's like 500 pages and it's like dense and the words are little and then the sequel was like over 600 pages and and other people and it's not just that book it's you know there's Cassandra Clare books and they just keep getting longer I'm like this is already a book in a series and why is the first book already 600 pages and half the time no more than half the time often when I read these books so much could be edited out and it just feels like there is less editing going on for length and for, I mean, the story, for grammar, whatever. Again, this goes back to publishing. Too many people are overworked, underpaid. I know, I know, I know. But with authors who get really big, let's say Sarah J Mass, her books just keep getting longer and they do not need to. They're the majority. There are even authors I really like. You see some Brandon Sanderson up here. Uh, a lot of his books, especially, so I've read two out of the Stormlight Archive. The first one is like a thousand pages. The second one is like 1100 pages. They keep getting getting longer. I will be the first to tell you. Well, I enjoyed those books. They could have cut out so much. There are so many books. And obviously Brandon Sanderson's a different, you know, but there are so many books that as Mara from Books Like Woe would say, do not earn their length. It's like, yeah, we could have cut out like a third of this maybe 100 pages here 50 pages here and it is a rare occurrence I feel like when I read a book that's maybe three to four hundred pages that I'm like oh this needed to be longer and sometimes that does happen because it doesn't feel like the story was developed but that also could be that certain part of the story could be taken out we could focus on this but it's usually only when a book is like excellent well crafted that I'm like wow I could have read more but it's like I wanted it to be longer but it didn't need to be longer does that make sense and I just feel like every there's just every book is like the first in a series and it's 600 pages both young adult and adult and it's like ah obviously middle grade I don't see that as much middle grade which I have a Let's see if I can turn this without you seeing all my mess. This shelf here is mostly middle grade. And while, okay, let's look at this one. This looks like the longest on the shelf. Okay, this one is 500 pages. Granted, but it is short and the words aren't super small, but this is the third, third, 
third in the series, maybe second or third in a series. And I mean, that is that is pretty long for a middle grade book. Um, for me as an adult, that, that I don't think that is that long. But for other kid, for young kids like this, Amari is right under four hundred pages. So it's just like help. Okay. But let's get to the dumbest tweet I've seen in a long time. And this is like no direct hate to this person. I don't know them. But this is a trend that I see on social media that I'm begging parents to stop. And after I read this, I think most of you will know what I'm saying, but I will also explain it. The tweet reads, so it was a quote tweet of the, the tweet I just shared from Maniza. This person says, I told my five year old this and she laughed and said it's unfortunate that capitalism has taught us to think the solution to shorter attention spans in an attention economy is to condense art into its most digestible watered down form. I don't know what it means, but she's a smart kid, so I trust it. I would like her, them, and all parents who go on social media or tell other people in, in, you know what it is? I've been like, why is my camera crooked? Cause one part was on the goddamn rug. I'm dumb. You thought I was feeling you? Okay, hold on, sorry. Wow. It still feels I don't know. Anyway, parents who tell people in real life or people on the internet that their child who is very young says things that you know they did not say, I need you to be so fucking for real. Be for real. Come the fuck on. She said, I'm gonna read it again. I told my five year old. And she said, the five year old said, it's unfortunate that capitalism has taught us to think the solution to shorter attention spans in an attention economy is to condense art into its most digestible watered down form. No, she didn't. She did not say that. Hell, you probably did not say that. You probably Googled it and put this on the internet. Why are you lying? Your five-year-old does not know what kind of economy we're in. They do not know it's unfortunate that capitalism, what do they know about capitalism? I am not denying that there are very smart children who are ahead of their time or, you know, uh, above their age, whatever, 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 but I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm calling cap. Is that what the young kids say? You're lying. Anyway, all I know is I'm sure there's more context to this. And, um, here's another one. Why are we not interrogating why there is such a demand for shorter books instead? Hate to be a back in my day person, but when we were their age, we'd read books the size of bricks for fun. Why are we normalizing our collectively diminishing attention spans? And Manessa said, you are wrong. Kidla is longer now than it was when we were kids. And that's nothing wrong with shorter books. The first book in the Narnia series is only 30, uh, 30, about 30 K words. The first book in the Spider Wick series is also only 30 K words. Kidla Fantasies clocks 75 plus K nowadays. And I'm like, bricks, what bricks were you reading? And so I have some books from my youth here and I'm going to go look up some more online because I was very aggravated by that tweet. So hold please. Here's some books from my youth that I read. Okay. This is one that's still one of my favorites. Um, and I remember reading it. I feel like towards the end of elementary school or maybe sixth grade at the most. Anyway, it's called Bloomability. It's a standalone book and it is 241 pages. Okay. Um, does anyone remember the Shiloh books? There's about four of these. They're all this big. Um, this is barely 100 pages, 120. Uh, the Giver. Very uh, foundational piece of, of text. Newberry Award winning The Giver. This is about 180 pages. Babysitter's Club, staple in my youths. These, the majority of them were like this size. They did start having like some special ones where they were like trips and stuff they would take that were a little chunkier, but 
The average book was this. This is 166 pages, okay, per. Um, this is a book that I remember from my youth called The Buford Summer. Um, do, you, do you see this? Do we, do we see a pattern, Ramona's World? Um, this was obviously when I was younger. And this is 200 pages. Emily's Runaway Imagination. Okay, we getting a, we got a little thicker here. What is this? Oh, 267. Okay, we love it. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry. A little, a little thicker. Mmm, two, about 260. And then some of the Little House on the Prairie books, which started growing in size, they did get a little more thick. This is about 360 pages, but also it's a big font because some of these books are deceiving. And they're like 400 pages, and then the font is smaller. But you see this nice thick font? So let's be for real. Let's be honest here. I know there are nuances into this whole thing and people want to tell their stories and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but there is a trend of books just getting longer and longer and longer across age groups and across genres. Okay, let's pause please and talk about romance because let me, hold on. Okay, okay. here's just a few romances I got up, I got up on the thing. Okay, so I read this one, It A Holidays, right? This is 289. Come on in. What you crying for? Come on. You miss me? Aw, oh, hey stink. You wanna go tell the people hello? Yeah. Oh, he missed mommy. I don't know if y'all can hear him, but Nigel was whining at the door. You miss me? You miss mama? Yeah, you miss mama. I love you. Tell them hello. Say hi. Mm, okay, you can go lay down. This is about 300 pages. This is a good length for a romance. They don't need to be, this really should be the limit. They don't need to be longer than this. However, I do have this one, which I haven't read yet. I did read the first one. That was boyfriend material. Now this, 416 pages. Okay, we're getting, we're getting long. Um, another one I had up there also, although it is a smaller size. And so this one is a little bit over 300 pages, but I feel like this is the sweet spot for romances. And once we're getting over that, we're getting in dangerous territories. But I've been seeing like, what was it last year or the year before the Spanish love deception or something it was like almost 500 pages. I'm like, no, 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 no. I don't even want many fantasies to be that long, let alone a romance. So. In the process of me editing this video, I might find more tweets and add that in, or maybe more books and add those in, but I'd love to know your thoughts. I want more, I want shorter books. I wonder if publishers understand that page count is actually one criteria I look for during collection development. I'm more likely to purchase for the library if it's under 350 pages and extremely unlikely to purchase if it's 450-ish or more. Most of my students want short books. For me, the short book's criticism isn't aimed at authors at all. Authors write the size their story needs to be. I just want publishers to also seek out, publish, and market stories that are shorter. We need both, and publishers could make sure we get both, but mostly choose not to. Educators and librarians have been saying for a very long time that we want shorter middle grade books, as in word count. The reading level and length of middle grade books aren't matching the needs of today's kids, period. It's also very obvious that many middle grade authors write for a specific kind of child, a privileged one who have on level or above grade level reading skills, comprehension, a grasp of high level vocabulary and an attention span that embeds them to read long books. I'm a middle grade author too, and an avid middle grade reader. I'm also an educator and sadly a good chunk of children aren't on or above grade level. In fact, there's several reading levels below. They struggle with comprehension, they struggle to grasp vocabulary. And they deserve variety in their books, not just in representation, but shorter books and easier text. Shorter books and easier text does not sacrifice a rich story. It teaches middle grade authors to adapt, but adopting a well, this is just how the industry is, stance on this, is very, very, very dismissive, especially when librarians and educators are key buyers of middle grade, and we often pay for it out of our own pockets or from limited budgets. We're the ones that are trying to teach these kids to read with little to no resources. Meet us in the middle here. Just this week, we had discourse about why middle schoolers aren't interested in reading books anymore. Well, this is a factor. Not sure why y'all are acting brand new here about this. I feel like folks are focusing on the final page count of a book, but as an educator, the bigger issue is the actual word count of the story. 
middle grades that have 350 to 400 pages and have more word count naturally, more and more middle grade word count is no longer in that 20,000 to 50,000 range. It's 70, 80, 90,000. That's a problem, a big, big problem. That's in the author's control. Word count is in the author's control. However, agents and publishers flex control over that. It's a top-down issue. Add in the fact that more middle grades are geared toward an adult audience based on text complexity, complexity, we've got another issue. Those are the core issues. Middle grade page count is simply a byproduct of a bigger problem that educators and librarians have been ringing the alarm about for years. Across all age ranges and, and genres, I want shorter books because help. And sure, there can be something, I'm sure there's something to be said about like TikTok and our attention, pan, uh, attention span. I think that's valid, but also, so, sometimes they just don't need to be this long. Okay? What's that sound on TikTok? It's like, I love books, but like, what's it, was this necessary or something like that? Like, ooh, and sometimes they are, sometimes, it is worth it. You know a book that earned its length? Hold on, let me look, let me look. <sighs> um, I can't think of one right now. Because look at, look at, look, 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 look at this. What is, why? I know this wasn't necessary and I haven't even read it yet. Like, please. Y'all are playing out here. It's really, it's really a, Robin, you cannot be exempt from this cat. You cannot be exempt from this conversation girl because what is this please <sighs> anyway I can't think of a book right now that has earned its length and that's bad actually I lied this masterpiece which is about 542 pages this should be this long okay but many things should not. So anyway, please let me know your thoughts down below. Keep it cute and respectful in the comments, okay? Um, and let me know your thoughts. Nice. Say bye bye. What do we tell them? Stay blessed, hydrated, moisturized, and sunscreen. And we'll see you later, huh? We say bye bye. We see you later. Bye. Thank you, Buki.